Hi, one of the things I promised to do when I launched the Canvas starter site was to then go back and do some educational videos on how things are done, how to undo certain things if you want to revert back to the my listing defaults, an inside look at you know how the site's built, all of those types of things, just an educational series. So whether you are thinking about buying a starter site or you've bought a starter site and you want to go back and look at how I did certain things, um, if you want to learn, reverse engineer what I've done, those types of things. That's what this video series is going to be about. And this is the, the first video of that series. So to help us along with that, we're going to follow my very own build notes for the Canvas starter site. And we're going to work through those. Okay. So from the My Listing Club website, that's mylisting.club, we're going to click on this starter sites card right here on the homepage. We're then going to click on this explore button at the top. That's going to take us down to our available starter sites. And again, we're focusing on the Canvas starter sites. So we're going to click into that card. We're then going to scroll down and look for the build notes section. And the first thing we want to look at here is performance. Okay. And let's just talk a bit about this more than I already have in previous videos. I've provided as much performance optimization value as possible without knowing every custom scenario, your infrastructure, what plugins that you're going to install, uh, what plugins you're going to un uninstall from this site potentially if you buy it, um, the overall competency regarding running and maintaining a WordPress website that the starter site customer has, um, that sort of thing. What, do you follow best practices? Do you just install every plugin under the sun? Do you not keep plugins updated? Do you not update the theme? You know, all of that stuff is outside of my control. So I do as much as I can to lay the groundwork for you to have a successful um, performance optimized website. So as I say here, unless a customer signs up for managed my listing, my listing website care, or the club community, I wouldn't have any insight about the customer. So once I sell you the starter site, if you're not in any of those three programs, I, I have no idea what you're doing with your site. And it's just, I can't really, I can't really do much. So I do as much as I can uh, in, in the event that, that that occurs, okay? Code snippet conditional loading. All code snippets are implemented responsibly in performance and mo with, mod with performance and modularity in mind. Using WP Codebox's conditional builder, code snippets are also applied are only applied only where they should be rather than loading across the entire website, which you typically see with my listing websites. So let me break this down for you and show you what I mean. In the back end, you're going to have a, an area called WP Codebox. And this is, in my opinion, the, the leading, and I don't use those words very often, but I truly believe this is the best code snippet on the market, snippet plugin on the market for many, many reasons. But Specifically, what I'm talking about here is the conditional loading. So as we see here, for example, let's take the My Listing Dashboard Light Mode CSS package. If we look at the condition builder, which we see right here, click on that, we see that this only applies to page URLs that contain the words My Dash Account. Okay? So again, the code snippet is dealing with the My Listing Dashboard, right? So we only want to apply it to the My Listing dashboard. Typically what you see on My Listing websites for people that don't know any different, what they're gonna do is they're going to jump into either the customizer, so appearance and customize, and they're gonna drop it in the custom CSS area that, that way. Uh, another way, not as popular, is to go through Elementor, and then there's a, there's a custom code area right here where you can drop your CSS. The, the Probably the most common thing that I see is people go into the theme area. So theme tools, theme options, custom code, and then CSS and drop it here. Big no-no, big problem, don't do it. The reason is you're, it's very hard to manage the CSS. Every bit of CSS you had, add here is gonna load across the entire website, whether it's needed or not. And if you look at how much work I put into these, these CSS packages, there is a good amount of code in here. Now that's just one snippet. Look at all these other ones. And imagine that loading on every single page of your website. That's what people do a lot of times. And, and unfortunately people are advised to the, do that a lot of times. They shouldn't be. You shouldn't go in here and add code. It's just, 
it's there's so many things that's wrong with it other than just how it loads. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that because it's not part of this video. But um, yeah, I just avoid doing that. Okay, so that is the conditional loading feature. And every snippet you see in here, that's that's how it works. The pricing page. If we look at the condition builder for that, it only applies if the page URL contains the word pricing. And you can get super granular. There's tons of options for doing this. Here's a basic search form condition builder only applies on the homepage because that's the only place I have the basic search form for this particular starter site. But you can get really, really granular. So add listing flow, for example, we see that it has two condition sets. So this is saying, well, let's apply this CSS anywhere that the page URL contains add dash listing or this edit job ID um, slug, okay? But you can go in here and create all kinds of different conditions. Uh, it doesn't have to be just about the page. It could be the post type. Um, there's just, you see here on my screen, there's all kinds of different options that you can choose. So it's very, very powerful, very awesome. But that is conditional loading and that's what we do. Next up is listing type revisions. Out of the box, my listing saves 15 versions of every starter site. Not the end of the world, but as I like to say, everything, every little bit adds up. Every, you know, depending how involved these listing types get, you know, it's it's a database hit. This stuff fills up in your database. I I knock these down to five by default um, with the starter sites and with start with uh, my listing websites that I own. Okay. Very, very simple to get out of this. You just FTP into the site. I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to connect to, let's see here. Connect to Canvas, and here we go. So I use, F, I highly recommend you use FileZilla. It's a free, it's a free application. Uh, it's available on all platforms, Windows, Mac, whatever. You just connect to your website. Uh, you just you get your FTP, SFTP credentials from your host, Kinsta. If you happen to be with Kinsta, they make it super easy. They you know how they provide it to you. You just plug that information into FileZilla, connect to your site, and it's just a file browser. Okay. Then you want to go into your public folder, into the WP content folder, and then you go into themes. We go into the My Listing Child theme. And then from there, we go to, let me think, which one am I doing here? Oh, which one was I doing? Templates. No, it's in this one right here. It includes not that. Sorry, that's a jar in my memory. There we go. Okay, so this is the path you go to. You just drill down into this path. And I've got a guide on how to do this too um, for, on the club website. But you drill down into this path. Public WP content, themes, my listing child theme. Hopefully, well, if you have the starter site, you definitely have the child theme. But hopefully on your site, um, if you're just following along and you don't have a starter site, you have a child theme. Um, but this is where you would implement this. And again, I have a guide for it. But if you have the starter site and your customer and you don't want this and you just want to get back to the defaults, it's very easy. Um, just go because the only thing in this folder is this listing types folder and editing this revisions PHP file. If you don't want those revisions anymore, just delete this entire SRC folder and you're and you're right back, um, right back there. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then now we see so we see these five revisions here. Even if I make a change, let's just say I change this icon and click update. We see that it saves no more than five listings here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. And I'm gonna make another change and save. And that's not going to make a difference. You know why? Because I did that on the actual Canvas starter site, which I should not have done. Um, so I'm going to have to fix that after this video. I shouldn't have done that. I should have connected to this test site that I've got. Um, but if we look at the actual Canvas site, I'll go ahead and just do that for you real quick. That's my fault. So I'm going to log into the actual Canvas site here. I'm like I said, I'm, I'm using a test, a copy of the Canvas site just so I don't screw it up. But obviously, I just it didn't work, so I just screwed it up. So um, here we go. Listing types. I think we did this, and we were looking at hike. And um, I'm going to change this icon here. 
There we go. So now we see we have six revisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, instead of the five. Now, every change we make, it's going to save. It's going to keep going until it gets to the 15, and it's going to keep rolling over the, the oldest revision. Okay? Totally up to you if you... If you want to, to um, reverse this and go back to the my listing de defaults, but that's how you do it. It's very, very simple to do. The other option is to use a file manager plugin and um, just browse that way. Okay. So for that, you go to plugins. I've already screwed up the canvas, not screwed up the canvas site, but I've, I've already got to do a restore from backup. So um, I'll just go ahead and use this site. So instead, you could do um, you could add a plugin. And do like file manager. I recommend that once you do this, you uninstall the plugin and then add it back if you ever need it. These are often security holes. Um, so use at your own risk, and especially if you screw up a file or something like that. If you have something like FileZilla, then um, you can always get into your site if you screw up a file or something like that. Okay, so let's go down into the plugin, WP File Manager. And you can just browse this way, the same way. WP content, themes, my listing child. And I think that was in the includes folder. Yep. And then there was that SRC and then the revisions. Okay. So that's how you would delete it. Just the same way, just you would use the plugin instead. All right. Okay. Let's see what else we've got here. Perf Matters base configuration. And Perf Matters is included in license. It's configured with base settings for performance optimization that I feel are safe for most of my listing websites. Okay. Now, if you don't want to use perf matters, well, then that's very easy. Just delete it. Just know that if you delete it and you ever feel like you need it back, there's, there's a charge for me to go back in there, install it and, and license it. So be careful what you uninstall, make sure you really want to uninstall it. But let's say you want to use perf matters, but for whatever reason you want to reset it to defaults, uh, very easy to do. Settings, Perf Matters, Tools, and where's the option here? Restore default options. Click this button right here. You'll you'll get you'll undo everything that I did. Which again, is, it's not much. It's very safe settings. But if you feel like you want to start from scratch and do your own thing, that's how you do it. Super simple. System fonts. System fonts have been implemented. Switching to a system font stack can be one of the most significant factors responsible for speeding up your My Listing website as they require no download time by the browse browser and they look great as a bonus. So with system fonts, I've got a guide on, on this as well, so I'm not going to go too far in depth. But system fonts use the fonts from your system, your computer. So there's nothing to download. It's just they're there and they look great out of the box already. But if for whatever reason you don't want to use system fonts and you want to use like say a Google font or a custom font, um, super simple to do. So just drop over here into WP code box and then go into whichever you have going light or dark mode. That's going to be another separate video, but light mode is the dark mode. So let's assume you're going to use that. You just go into the global light mode code snippet and look for the system font stack entry right here and just delete delete both of those entries and save your code snippet. And just like that, system font stack is removed from the site. Okay. Hopefully you're seeing how I build this stuff. It's modular. It's you're not required to use any of the stuff. It's easy to get back to the default. It's easy to do your own thing. Um, yeah. Elementor containers. Elementor containers are used exclusively boosting website performance by reducing the overall weight of web pages compared to Elementor's older section column elements. So let's quickly look at that. So if I edit a page, let's just edit the, let's edit the blog. Okay, if we look and we inspect, so right click and go to Navigator, the Elementor Navigator. If you look here, everything is container-based. Canvas was a brand new site that was built, um, I think right about the time that containers came out. I can't remember the exact timing, but from the get-go, I said, you know, we're only building con with containers, not using the old sections and um, columns anymore. So right out of the gate, 
Canvas is going to be way more performant than the other starter sites that I built. I have to circle back to those. Um, they're fine, but it's just there's a, a performance gain. It's just the way it is. Um, but Canvas out of the box is 100% containers, no sections, no columns. It's ready to go. All right. You can read up on that. Just do a Google search for elements or containers and read up all about that. Okay, what's next? Uh, WooCommerce high performance order storage. I did a video on this that was extremely popular, not just in the my listing community, but outside of that, it got a, quite a bit of views and um, seemed to be a pretty big hit. But I was I I was one of the first people I think to did a video on it. But I pay attention or close really close attention to to change logs and things like that. So I was on this from the very beginning. But high performance order storage is a new uh, a new way that WordPress, WooCommerce approaches how they store stuff in the database for WooCommerce orders. So by default, this is going to be enabled for you out of the box. And, and um, I got a link here to the video if you want to learn more about this. But for that, it's under, there's nothing you need to do here. It's just, it is the way it is. It's the way forward. So WooCommerce settings. And where is that? Advanced, I believe, off the top of my head. And features, yes, order data storage is high performance order storage that is enabled by default. You, again, you don't have to do anything here. There should be no reason in the world that you would ever have to switch back to the old legacy, legacy system. But if you want to, you can, but out of the box, it is ready to go for you. Okay, guys, those are just some of the, the high point, you know, performance things that I've done for you for this site. And again, the main thing I want to show you outside of just my focus is just on building beautiful stuff. Hopefully things beautiful functionality and things like that and building the features in. I think about performance as I do this stuff. Hopefully you see the value and hopefully you also see that it's modular and you, you're not reliant upon what I've done. You're not relying upon me for anything. It's just you can do your own thing if you want. Um, totally up to you. It's totally, totally flexible. All right, guys, uh, hope, hope all is well, and I will see you in the next video. All right, see ya.